Welcome back to my garage. Last video we realized all the bearings in my engine is gone. They've been worn down by the abrasive uh, goo from uh, running the carbon fiber rotor valve against an, uh, the aluminium surface and also the PTFE surface of that frying pan insert I made. And, um, so we need to fix that problem before we can continue testing and uh, and experience more goo from rope revalve abrasion. Before that, you might notice the sound is a little bit uh, not, not as good this time, and that's because I wrecked a second, uh, my second microphone, wireless microphone receiver, and uh, looks like the only problem is the, the receiving end of that jack, 3.5 millimeter jack, is uh, ripped off the PCB. We'll take this apart and see if we can uh, solder it back on or solder on some fly leads and do something. I'm using this cheap setup because battery life is so good. I can pretty much run a whole week without uh, replacing the batteries. And the batteries are replaceable, so when they run out I can just replace them instead of waiting for these to get charged. And uh, not having to worry about forgetting to charge them and then not having power when I'm ready to film. I won't be able to save it because uh, I've ripped the pads off. I might have to sacrifice the benefits of uh, great battery life and uh, replaceable batteries for, uh, for ruggedness next time. At the moment I can't actually afford a new one, so the, the camera mounted microphone will have to do for now. In wait for better times, which should be here soon, I think. Let's take this apart and assess the damage. We'll have to fabricate a puller to get this off. It's sitting on a tapered shaft and uh, there's not much room. Well, actually there's no room to get a normal puller in here. I'll have to make something. And I actually think I'm gonna, I'm gonna sacrifice this and to make that puller. And I'm gonna make a new steel rotary valve out of a thinner material. Buy a thinner saw blade or something. Acetone really burns in uh, small cuts, like much worse than uh, alcohol. Not grinding off the sink layer was uh, not such a good idea. Burnt up my tension.
let's hope it hasn't become too brittle. Became too brittle, I think. It sheared the actual material, not the weld. I wish I didn't make that taper fit so well. <laughs> Might have to find another. A different idea. I could use the case itself as the puller. It's not ideal, but uh, I could do that. Could also thread the inside of this. That's easier said than done now that it's mounted. I could thread it and uh, and make use of a puller like this. That's not possible at the moment. That's a bearing in a uh, really bad condition. <laughs> So first of all the Conrad shows signs of having been extremely hot. You can see the color change here. And for a reason. If you look at all these pins, they're supposed to be round of course. And uh, none of them are. They're actually all square. Of some, uh, in some way. <laughs> Square-ish. It's actually the worst case of uh, worn out big end bearing I've ever seen. Luckily it seems like I, I can't see any damage to the cylinder nor the head which is uh, which is fortunate but uh, really strange. <laughs> Probably there was not enough clearance between the washers and, uh, and the cager for the, for the broken cage bits to to come out and uh, cause further destruction. The small end bearing is uh, looks fine, but uh, the rollers are really dull, so they're worn, of course. And uh, same thing with the uh, 
with the ignition side or valve side uh, roller bearing it looks fine but uh, there's no no point in running this again like I need to replace this because it's probably worn as this is so worn and the same thing with this bearing and this bearing also feels fine but there's more axial play in it than uh, than there's supposed to be and uh, I can't feel the radial play but but of course this is worn when this is this badly worn and uh, this has experienced the same abrasive goo as this bearing I'm not sure you can pick that up but you can see how square those bearings are or needles are and all of them are the same so completely destroyed both the crank journals are worn out also should be a slight press well actually just a, a hard sliding fit into this bearing now it's a like slip fit loose slip fit and uh, same thing goes for this probably or actually I can see that it's really worn so that's the the inner race of the, the roller bearing we'll have to replace the crank the bearings and also we'll replace the piston and uh, pretty much every rotating part or moving part in the engine and we'll uh, we'll hone the cylinder and uh, measure it and then order a piston of the for the for the correct uh, clearance I can't do any of this until uh, around two-thirds into this month because uh, of the the financial aftermath of my little uh, my slight uh, mental breakdown earlier this summer I had to take a lot of time off and uh, you know I want to thank everybody for the support and the donations towards the uh, new bearings and stuff and uh, it's just that at the moment I have to prioritize food on the table and uh, paying the house and the car and, and kids all that stuff all the financial responsibilities of a grown adult like me and uh, so I can't just spend my money on this stuff, even though that's my uh, that's what I want to do. But I can't at the moment. It's not long now until I can uh, continue spending all my money on this stuff. Not all my money, but there will be money away. Whatever you know what I mean. What we can do is fix all the slight things that I haven't bothered fixing because uh, they're slight. We'll start with this, which isn't actually a thing to fix. Well, actually it is now, because it's uh, melted. This is PLA. It's holding up fine in the engine. No problem with the fuel and no problem with heat either, it seems. Except for when this, when the Conrad overheated. The engine was probably sitting still with, the, with this sitting here. And you can see it's melted. There's no deformations in other places, it's just melting from, from a burning hot conrod. The G-code file for this should be on one of these SD cards. I have to go through them and, uh, and find it. And then it's just a matter of starting up the printer and, uh, and printing. I didn't bother leveling the table and uh, it seems like the first layer is sitting in a, a little, it's a little bit too squashed. It doesn't matter I think. Oh shit. No, it does. I'm curious to see the difference between the 3 point micrometer and the 2 point. Again, thank you Mito Toyo for, uh, for this. This is 39.996. Now the gauge is set to 39.996 millimeters. So 90 degrees from the exhaust port we're seeing Five microns over 
39.96 which is 40 millimeters 40.000 pretty much and then straight across from the exhaust port where you would see some oval in like one or two microns more we're seeing some wear down further down in the cylinder it's worn like five microns so not too bad at all what will the three point micrometer say saying spot on 40 so this is obviously better for measuring a cylinder an engine cylinder gotta give it to blixness racing and their uh, nika seal coating because uh, this is really rugged stuff it's been through a couple of ring snags and uh and pretty severe abrasion from that uh, from the carbon fiber aluminium dust and uh, still not really anywhere at all That's the stuffer to take up volume in the crankcase and uh, bring it into normal territory. So not experimental. Same thing goes for this thing, which is a stand-in for a secondary reed valve, or actually the primary, and this was the secondary. So this case now has three intake options. This uh, compromised reed intake, this reed intake, which is far from compromised, which is also meant to be a resonance intake and then the rotary intake so uh, a proper prototyping case See you Friday for uh, more improvements while we're waiting for bearing and crank funds.